Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Brie from the blog Homemade on Our Homestead. Today I have a really fun and exciting project plan. We're gonna be making a DIY hanging chair. The weather is starting to get a lot warmer out and as more and more people spend time outside, I thought what a great time to do a project that you can use outside. So this swing you can hang from a front porch, you can hang it from a tree or on an existing swing set. And the great thing about this is it can also be used indoors. You can hang it um, in a child's bedroom or a reading nook. So I thought this would be just a really fun project to share with you all. Let's go ahead and get our supplies and I'll show you how to make it. So before we get started constructing our swing, the first thing you're gonna do is take that drop cloth that you purchased either on Amazon or your local hardware store, and we're gonna throw it in a wash. Um, I prefer to wash mine when I get them. I find that the drop cloths tend to kind of have a dingy smell, almost a little chemically, and I really wanna loosen up those fibers in the fabric by giving it a really good hot wash first. So I throw it in my washing machine with some detergent and some bleach, and I run it through a cycle, and then I throw it in the dryer. If it still feels a little stiff after that point, you can also wash it again. Um, typically I find one wash is sufficient, but if you uh, wanna wash it twice, you can do that as well. Um, once your drop cloth has come out of the dryer, we're gonna go ahead and get it cut to the dimensions that we need to put our swing together. All right, now let's go ahead and go over the list of things you're gonna need to make this DIY hanging chair. You're gonna need a 3 8 inch eye bolt. This is what you'll put into your ceiling or out on your porch to hold your swing up. A 3 8 inch link snap. This snaps into the eye bolt. A clean and dry drop cloth, or you can also use two yards of canvas material. One 15 foot piece of 3 8 inch nylon poly cord. A 36 inch piece of two inch diameter wooden dowel rod, a Sharpie marker, a drill with a coordinating 3 8 inch drill bit, and notice on the eye bolt and the link snap the working load. These are just gonna give you the um, weight capacity that your swing will be able to hold when it's up in place. You can also use fabric pens or fabric paints to customize your chair when it's finished. Now it's time to get our drop cloth marked so we can get it cut to the right dimensions. Start by taking your drop cloth and fold it in half lengthwise. With the folded seam on your left hand side, take your ruler and measure from the bottom up 32 inches and place a mark. From that mark you just made, measure out 16 inches and place another mark. Now using the bottom edge of your drop cloth, measure across the bottom 24 inches and place a mark. Then take your ruler and from that mark you made at the 16 inch mark, matching up the 24 inch mark along the bottom, draw a line. Then take your ruler and draw a line from that mark up at the 32 inch side seam across to that 16 inch mark. This should be the shape that's on your drop cloth before you're ready to cut. Using a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter, cut out that shape you just drew on your drop cloth or canvas material. When this is opened up, this is the shape it should be before you begin to sew. So if you own a serger or sewing machine, this is a really great option. Take those three edges that are unfinished and serge them. If you don't own a serger, I can show you how to do this in the next step, just using an iron and a regular sewing machine. I just found that because I have a serger, it really gives it a nice finished look, but again, the step is completely optional. 
So without a serger sewing machine, we're going to take these two long edges as indicated and we're going to finish them with an iron and just a regular sewing machine. Take your piece of fabric with the raw edge, you're going to fold it up about a quarter of an inch and press. Then take that edge and fold it up an inch and a half and press again. This is going to leave us a nice large channel to feed our rope through. Slide that ruler along the raw edge and you can either pin in place or just iron is fine to make that channel for our rope. When you get to the corner, fold the corner in at a 90 degree angle, give it a little finger press, and then fold over again. This is just going to enclose that edge so you don't have a piece of fabric that's hanging out and over. Gives it a nice finished look. Go ahead and give it a pin and or iron and now this side is ready to sew. Now you're going to start the other side of your drop cloth with the other raw edge and you're going to repeat the same steps. You can start by folding in that corner at a 90 degree angle to give it a nice finished look. And if you used a serger you can go ahead and just fold it up an inch and a half. If you didn't this is when you would fold up a quarter of an inch and press and then up the inch and a half to create that nice finished edge on your channel where your rope is going to go. And you're just going to do this along this whole edge as well. Again, you don't have to pin it. You can just iron it and it will definitely stay in place. Now you should have both of your side seams with the raw edges either pinned or ironed in place. Once that step is completed, it's time to start sewing. So for this part of the chair construction, I just used the side of my presser foot and I lined that up with the surged edge that I had created before. And if you didn't use a serger, you would just use the edge that you had folded under twice as your sewing guide. Keep that edge of the presser foot right along that edge and sew all the way down. Backstitch at the beginning and the end. And then I went ahead and I created another row alongside that line of stitching too. So I had two rows of stitching along each side channel. So once you've finished sewing, you should have two lines of stitching running along that finished edge. Take your chair swing that you're just now completed, fold it up and set it aside for later. Okay, so we've just finished constructing the main part of our swing made from our drop cloth. Now we're gonna take the dowel rod, a Sharpie marker, and a tape measure, and we're gonna mark the holes that we need to drill for the ropes for our swing. From one end of the dowel rod, place a mark at three inches and another mark at the six inches. This is where we're gonna drill that 3 8 inch hole for each piece of rope. Go ahead and repeat for the other side. When you finish marking your dowel rod, these are what the markings should look like on each end. Now taking that 3 8 inch drill bit, go ahead and drill those holes that you had just marked on your dowel rod. Now for mine, I did pre-drill the holes, but I didn't find that it made much difference to do a smaller diameter hole first. So I would recommend just using the 3 8 inch drill bit and drilling it that way and saving yourself a step. After you've finished drilling your holes, you're going to take a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and just go ahead and give it a little sand. You're just sanding off any rough edges um, that could potentially splinter. Go ahead and give that a sand on both sides until it's nice and smooth. Now it's time to get our chair put together. So get your dowel rod, your drop cloth or canvas that you sewed for your chair base. You're going to need a tape measure, your sharpie marker, and your rope. You may potentially need a lighter if you want to singe the end of your rope just to give it a nice finished look. Start by taking that piece of rope and you're going to feed it up through one of the outside holes on your dowel. Pull the rope through and you're going to double knot it. If you have some special kind of knot you want to do here, you are definitely welcome to do that. I just found a double knot worked just fine. Pull it tight. And this is what the knot should look like. Now you're going to pull that knot tight to the dowel rod and you're going to measure 
40 inches and place a mark with your Sharpie marker. This is where the next knot is going to be in our swing. So before we actually tie a knot here, we're going to find the end of our rope and we're going to feed that through the channel of our swing. Now here I'm using this really fun sewing tool called a bodkin, but you can definitely just fish the rope through without it, or you can also use a safety pin. So opening up that swing, starting at the bottom part, or the widest part of the swing, you're going to feed your rope up through the channel. So this is the step that I found that if your rope is starting to fray a little bit, it's going to make it a lot easier if you have a nice clean cut on the end of that rope and you kind of singe it with the um, lighter to give it a nice rounded edge. It will definitely feed through this channel a lot easier. Um, sometimes this takes a little maneuvering anyway to get this through, um, but your channel was left wide enough so it really shouldn't be a problem. So once you've had that rope fed all the way through that side channel on your swing, you can remove your bodkin or your safety pin and you're going to want to pull that drop cloth all the way up towards the top until that mark that you made at the 40 inch um, piece on your rope is visible. And this is where you're going to tie your second knot. Now I just use a single knot here. You can use a double knot if you want. The purpose of this knot is to keep the drop cloth from creeping all the way up to the dowel rod. So you really don't need to tie a knot here if you really don't want to. Um, but I just found with a lot of use that it made a big difference to keep that swing base where it's supposed to be. So go ahead and give that knot a pull to make it nice and tight and secure. Now you're going to go and you're going to find the center of your rope and make a mark. So fold your rope in half, find the very center point. Again, you can use a Sharpie for this. You can use a piece of tape. You're just going to want to indicate the center point of your rope. You can also do this um, step at the very beginning if you want, but I found it didn't really matter. So now that you have that center point mark made, take that piece of rope and you're going to fish it up through that other hole that you made next to that hole you just fed your rope up through. Go ahead and pull the rope all the way through there. Make sure your swing isn't twisted and it's laying nice and flat. Now you're going to find that center mark on your rope, grab your link snap, and where that mark is on the center of your rope, grab both pieces together and you're just going to tie a single knot there. Once I have my knot tied, I'll show you what it looks like. There you go. And your link snap, you can either put it on before you tie a knot or after, it doesn't matter. And there's your, your knot. Now this is going to give you flexibility to adjust your swing. If you need your swing um, a lot shorter, you can just go ahead and tie multiple knots underneath that main knot and it's going to shorten up that swing quite a bit. It just is going to depend on where you're going to hang it, either outside or inside. Now that you have the center point of your swing with the link snap on it, you're going to go through the inside channel now going down. Again, if the edge of the rope starts to fray, this would be a good time to take that lighter and give it a little singe. It's going to make it feed through that hole in your dowel rod a little bit easier. But with some twisting and turning and pushing at the same time, it actually feeds through pretty easily. So once you have that fed through, go ahead and give it a pull. Then you're going to take your dowel rod, lay it flat on the ground, and then I kind of like to stand up, make sure that when that rope is laying flat on the ground that that link snap is at the top and it looks like that there's a similar amount of rope on each side. This is going to make sure that the swing is going to hang straight. So again, lay it flat stretch it out and you should have a similar length of rope on each side. Starting from the end of that piece of rope, you're now going to measure up 40 inches and make a mark with your Sharpie or with a piece of tape. 
and go ahead and tie it in a single knot. Again, if you chose not to do this step on the other side of your swing, you wouldn't need to do that. Or if you chose to do a double knot or something, that's when you're gonna to wanna to do that is at the 40 inch mark from the bottom of this rope on this side as well. Now using your bodkin or your safety pin or just the rope itself, you're gonna feed it starting at the top part of your swing going down and you're gonna fish that rope all the way through that last channel. Pull the rope out. Remove your bodkin or your safety pin and push that canvas material or drop cloth up. Take the end of that rope and then you're gonna fish it up through that last hole on your dowel rod. As you can see, my rope kind of frayed a little bit. I was still able to get it up and through the dowel rod with no problems. You could also put a little piece of tape on the end of your rope to keep it from fraying if you didn't want to use a lighter and that would work fine too. And now you're going to go ahead and make a double knot on this part of the rope. Pull it really tight. Pull the rope so the knot sits on top of the dowel rod and now your swing is completed. So if you're interested in a written out tutorial, head over to our website. I will have a link for that in the description box below and you can find the written tutorial and supply list there. So thank you so much for joining me for this DIY hanging chair video today. I hope you guys all found it helpful and we'll give some of these a try. I really had a lot of fun uh, making these for both of my kids. As I said before, they're great for indoor or for outdoor and they're really easy to store when they're not in use. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and stick around for more DIY videos. Um, if you have made these swings before, I would love to know in the comment section down below um, how you're enjoying them, if your kids really like them, and the fun ways that you guys have personalized these. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.